Hey folks, it's Fridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. We are still whizzing up and down the field doing the raking over here. And, well, the hired help is whizzing up and down the field doing the raking. We are just going to watch it down to the end. And yes, everything all seems tickety-boo as usual. We will let that one carry on doing what it's doing, and we are going to go over here, and we are going to start the baling. So I'm just going to go over to that one right there, and get straight into it. We've already gone and gathered up some of the straws, so we've only got bits of the straw left to do, which is, well, the, I say bits, it's the, the, the land work we've still got to do. And then once that's done, the straw will all be finished, and we will be working on the field again. And what we're going to do is we've got to prepare the entire field. Now, we're looking at a new um, seed drill that we want to get. Except that there's very little point in actually getting the seed drill yet. Now, I've, I did have several comments from last week saying, why don't we go for the Horsch Pronto, the 9-meter drill, the direct drill with the fertilizer seed all the lot. Uh, we don't quite have the horses for that one, I don't think. If I'm reading this correctly, we've got in here, we've got 270 horses for that one. And then if I go over here to the Cedars, we've got the Horsch Pronto right there. That requires 270. So it's, it, well, I mean, possibly we've got it. It's kind of borderline. That one right there is only 76,000. This one is a lot more money. I mean, it's cheaper than that one. It's definitely cheaper than the Lemkin over here. However, it has been pointed out that we're not going to get any savings by using the Lemkin because we've only got a small cultivator. So we need a bigger cultivator to be able to make that worthwhile. And we don't, you know, that's going to push the price up even higher. So the Vardastad is probably our best bet at the moment. Go for the six meter one on there. We've got plenty of horsepower to drag out and around the field. And we can use it for planting the grass and stuff as well. That shouldn't be a problem. This one here, whilst this... Is, yeah, I, I really do like this option. Um, we're right up against the limit on that one as far as horsepower goes. And it's definitely one that I would like to upgrade to. But I don't really think we need to get that. And so for the same reason, I don't think we need to go for 12 meters of Lemkin Z drill either. Because it, you know... We're just not really going to need it on this field yet. And when that's all done up there, we're going to be planting out with grass anyway. So at the moment, you know, it's, it's going to be a fair while before we expand our arable enterprise. Which means that, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of money wasted really, isn't it? If, if it's going to take quite a while before we can start heading off towards doing more arable land than we've got right here. I mean, I think... Really, the first upgrade we do would be the combine. We go for a slightly bigger combine, something that will take a, a a wider swath. Then, if we've got a six meter Vardastad direct drill, we're not really going to need anything else because even though we've got the periodic plowing turned on, you only you don't need to periodically plow. Um, or well, I don't even think they've called it periodic plowing anymore. I think it's called something different. But you don't need to periodically plow. All you need to do is plow after you've done corn or root crops. You don't need to plow any other time, I, I think. Or maybe sugarcane as well, but sugarcane's not going to come into it. That doesn't matter. So if, we, if we've only got to plow after doing those crops, then we're not going to need to plow because we are not doing any maize. Uh, maize, corn, however you want to call it. We're not doing any of that. And because we're not doing any of that, we're not going to need to worry about it. It's not going to be an issue for us at all in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, what, why do we need to worry about doing any, um, any plowing? So, because we don't have to take that bit into account. I mean, even if we do, it, um, the way it used to be was every third crop, wasn't it? Um, but they, that's, that whole mechanic has been removed out of the game now. Um, so, we don't have to worry about that bit. We only have to worry about doing the crops that we've got at the moment. And that is going to be wheat, barley, and you know, beans and canola and stuff like that. Um, 
We're not going to worry about doing any of the others at the moment. And then when we do, then we can worry about plows and bigger cultivators and um, getting uh, other stuff as well. And we'll also be getting a bigger tractor as well, won't we? Because uh, you know, if, if we're really pushing things... I mean, yes, this tractor is great. It, it, it will do the job and it'll do everything that we want it to do for quite a while. But I think when we do start expanding the arable, we're going to be wanting to... We're going to start looking at machines that this tractor is going to struggle with, including the Horse Pronto. The, the, um, it's, it says it requires 270 horsepower. This tractor puts out 270 horsepower, and you know technically we could do that. We would be able to do it. It would pull it, but it would really struggle. Anything resembling a hill is going to slow it down to a near standstill, and... I don't really want that. I'd rather it just kept cruising up and down the field. It would ultimately be faster to do six meters and keep a good steady pace than it would be to do nine meters and be slowing down to a crawl half the time that we're working. So we will go with the Vardestad, I think. Um, as many people said, if we can't, if we're not upgrading the cultivator, then the Lemkin is a exercise in futility because we've only got a really small cultivator at the moment and personally I think upgrading a cultivator is a bit daft at the moment and it's going to cost a load of money anyway it's going to be another 50 grand if we want to upgrade the cultivator to something of a reasonable size we're looking at fifty thousand dollars and you know that then puts the Lemkin option up to a hundred and sixty thousand dollars which is more than I want to be spending on that at this point in time I want to get the sheep pen expanded. I want a bigger sheep pen up there so that we can start doing some more work on that. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it all pans out. But this, this is kind of what I'm thinking. However, at the moment, we need to be saving our money because we've got to put lime on this field. We've got to be putting fertilizer on this field. We've got to get this field planted. So we, we um, in order to be able to run our comparison with the extra... Um, with all, all of the extra bonuses and everything like that, we, we've got a lot of stuff that we want to do. I'm thinking that we will go and put lime on this field next. That will be the next job that we do is we'll spread lime across the field. And then as soon as we've done the lime, we can get the plow in here and we can start plowing. Because the plowing bit is the bit that's going to take the longest. So we'll, we'll get that one going as quickly as we can. And then once the plowing is done, we've got cultivating to do after plowing and then we've got to get our seed drill underway and at the moment our seed drill is small but because we've got cultivating and everything to do as well um i think that's going to be okay I mean, i'm not too worried about that we will we're not going to worry about having anything sort of going around the outside edges that well i might do it with the cultivator i might get the cultivator to do a few rounds around the outside edge like i did before and then the seed drill can just start working straight up and down so that we don't have any confusion. Because sometimes if you try to plant seeds around the edge, then when the cultivator's working, it'll go along and it um, cultivates out some of the seed you've just put in. And we don't really want it to do that. So, um, yeah. I, I think that'll be all right. I think that'll work nicely. The rake has just about finished. I'm catching up with it reasonably well. But he has almost finished there now. Let's just pull this one in here. He should be whizzing up around. There he goes. Is that going to be the last run that he does down through it? If it's not, it's going to be pretty close. If I mean, if it isn't the last run that he does, then I suspect I'm going to have to manually go along and do the last run myself because he's just not going to be able to cope with the effort of not... Uh, of, well, of, of going through there. Because you know what it's going to do? It's going to stop. Every single little tiny bit It's going to lift up. It's going to go forward. It's going to put the reels down again. Then it's going to go forward a tiny fraction. And it's going to lift up. And you, you, you get the idea. Although it might not. They may be far enough apart that it'll actually do it properly. Because looking at that from this angle. There are spaces where it's looking like it might do it. We'll see. We'll be driving back down there in a minute. We'll be able to watch how it performs. He's left a little... Oh, no, he's not left a little bit. He's just... He's, he's done the whole um, up and down dance bit that he likes to do. It does that really weird dance kind of bit that um, kind of throws a spanner in the works of absolutely everything. There's a tiny little bit of straw that I've left behind there. And I've just done the same right there beside me. We'll grab that on the way back up. Now, watch carefully. Is it going to cope with the complexities... 
of being able to do a run up through... No, it's not. <laughs> You've, you, 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 you think you're finished, do you? You think you're finished? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Sunshine. Yes. I can absolutely tell you, you are finished. Pack your bags and get out of here. I've got no time for people who are going to be messing us around like this. We do not need you to be saying, oh, I've finished because, well, there's nothing directly in front of the rake. Right? You, you, you haven't finished at all. But I can tell you that you're finished here. That's the last time that you will be working here for me. I want workers that are actually responsible and, you know, care about their employment and... Well, actually, we don't want people who care about their employment. All we want are people who are desperate for work and desperately, desperately need money because, um, you know, we're, we're big. We're, we're a big faceless corporation. And honestly, corporations, when they tell you, I've said this before and I'll say it again, when corporations tell you that they care about the customer and they care about all these things, they're lying. They don't mean that at all. They don't care about the customer. They don't care about anything other than how much money. They don't care about their employees. All they actually care about is how much can we get out of these employees? How little can I pay these people so that I can get away with looking like I'm reasonably generous? Maybe not generous. You know, if I'm looked at as generous, perhaps I'm being a little bit too generous. Uh, yeah, I, I want to get away with paying people as little money as possible. I don't want to be paying them. If, if I could get away with it, I wouldn't pay them at all. They would work for free. I am a faceless corporation. I do not want people thinking for themselves. I do not want people going above and beyond. Well, actually, I do. I do want them going above and beyond, but for free. I want them to do it for free. And I want people who are desperate for a job because people who are desperate for money will work for less money than people who are not desperate for money. And I also like the fact that they're desperate because they're willing to cut corners in order to get the money. They're willing to do more in order to get the money compared to the people who are not desperate. So a corporation wants people who are desperate and who are, well, the, 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 that's about all they're really looking for is, is desperate people. The people who are desperate for their jobs. I've actually been stood in a manager's office when I worked for a large company. I'm not going to say who it is for in case I get into trouble for it. Um, but I was summoned into the manager's office and I was told that they weren't sure I fit in there because they weren't sure I actually needed the job. And that is something that I've heard several times by a lot of people. You seem to be doing well for yourself outside of work. We're not sure you actually need this job. It wasn't a problem with performance or anything like that. It was just that they didn't like that this person might not necessarily need the job and that sums up to me what a large corporation is all about i'm sure there are one or two larger corporations that um you know go against the grain and do actually care about employees and a few other bits and pieces but generally they don't the only thing they care about is money and how much they can squeeze out of you so my message for you today ladies and gentlemen is do not give the best years of your life to a job that doesn't want you right do not do it take a risk spend some more time with your family do the things that you love to do don't feel that you owe that large faceless corporation anything at all because if the worst were to happen to you and I mean, if the absolute worst were to happen to you and you were no more, there would be people who would miss you. That large corporation that you put so much time and effort into, they would replace you within an hour. With, if you drop down dead at work, they would have you replaced within an hour and things would carry on. And they would have your job replaced within a fortnight. They would advertise and they would replace your job within two weeks. It would be as if you'd never existed, and that would be it, right? You would be a minor inconvenience to someone else in the office because they would have had to go and fill out a, um, they would have had to go and do job interviews, and they would replace you, and it would be very, very quick. Your family aren't going to replace you. Your friends aren't going to replace you. There, I guarantee, even for those of you, and I know that there are people who think that they are unloved there on what there aren't people who care about i guarantee you there is someone out there who wakes up in the morning 
glad that you exist that you are in their life. There is always someone out there who wakes up in the morning just pleased that you are in their life. You do make a difference and you will be horribly sorely missed if something were to happen. So don't give all of that time and effort to an entity that does not care about you. That's my, that, that's my message for today, is do not give all that time and effort to an entity that does not care in the slightest about you. All you are is a very, very easily replaceable number on a spreadsheet, and that is it. You are nothing else to them. You will simply be replaced. I've worked in a place where somebody actually collapsed and died in the workplace. There wasn't any... The, the, at no, nobody else was allowed to leave their place on the lines uh, the, in, 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 in the jobs. Yeah, no, nobody else was allowed to do anything different. They had to keep going. And they pulled someone else in and there was a 10-minute disruption. That's it. 10 minutes someone actually collapsed and passed away on the line and they stopped for 10 minutes and that was it that was all they meant it was 10 minutes all right that's and that's that's normal that that is actually fairly normal for a, a lot of big places so don't think that you matter to them they're, they're, they're not going to care and therefore do something that you care about. That, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Take a risk. Go and do something you care about. Right? I know that many of you have responsibilities. You've got bills that you need to pay. You've got various different things that you need to do at different times. And yeah, that's, I, I get that. I do. I absolutely get that. And sometimes it's really difficult to find that replacement job to the job that you currently have at the moment. Because... Well, in part, fear. Fear is a terrible, terrible thing, and it will hold you back, right? You, you, you've got something that's giving you the money that you need, and so you're afraid to go and look for something different. Don't be afraid. Go and find something that you actually love. Go and find something you can be passionate about. Go and find something that makes you... Well, I was going to say happy, but I, I do try to avoid using the phrase happy these days um, when regards to life in general because happiness is not a default state and when you think that you need to be happy all the time you're not going to be happy all the time nobody can be happy all the time it's an impossibility this is how so many people make money they sell the false idea that happiness must be eternal and constant it's not it never will be you cannot be happy all the time content with life that's di that is entirely different and it's not something that advertising tries to sell you they're not trying to make you content with life they're trying to make you happy and happy is different right happy is just a burst of um endorphins that are released by your brain they give you the happy stuff and then you're, you're all pleased and if you come to rely on the happy stuff too much you don't focus quite so much on the smaller bits which make up the rest of the life and that's that's you know that the, the contentment with life and contentment is altogether different to the happy stuff and if you i mean yeah don't get me wrong that the happy stuff is good right we, we like the happy stuff but don't think that the happy stuff is the be all and end all okay it really isn't all right let's unload that onto there and do that and we'll go in here and we will have a look at the prices a minute what do we got we're on 60 and we're going up I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start fast forwarding time now. We'll go up to 120 times. And we'll see how much higher we can get that 60. See if it can go up a little bit further. That would be really good if it could. And I'll bring you in round here. One thing I will do, I think, is do something over here with this exit off of the field. We're not going to do the road up through. We'll leave that until next time. But we will do a little bit of something with that exit off of the field. We've got a little bit of money. We could put a wall up there or something like that. And we, we can sort of work along like that. Right, we're up to 63. It's slowing down. The, the rate that it's rising is slowing down. But it is still going up. So maybe we won't sell until morning. 
Let me hop off of there a minute. We can go until 8 o'clock in the evening before we have to fast forward the night. So we'll go until half past 7 and we'll see what it's doing. It's still stopped at 63, so I think it's not going to go any higher than that. We go to a quarter past 7 and then we'll stop. I mean, I needed to be fast-forwarding a bit anyway while I was loading the bales, technically, so... It's up to 64. Very, very slow rising up now, isn't it? And it's not... I mean, it still says that it's going up, but... Um, you've got to remember that it's not... It, that doesn't mean it's going up fast. That just means that it's going up. So... Right, 64. We'll, we'll go with 64. I mean, if we find in the morning it's all the way up at 70, or well, then I'll just say, oh, my bad. Let me go like that. Load you on. So, yeah. Don't give the best years of your life to a faceless entity that does not care about you in the slightest. If you've got a passion, find a way. Right? There is always a way. Trust me. My passion is gaming, and I did not think for the longest time that gaming would ever be able to do anything. Um, find a way. It might mean that you've got to make some other sacrifices. I have. I've given up quite a few different things. And I'm not going to lie, since I started doing the whole YouTube thing, my income was down quite considerably on what it used to be. But something that is very important to note is if you've got someone who is a significant member of a household. Now, I am talking about a family household, right? And it, it's going to be different for everybody. But, I mean, th there are some striking similarities with a lot of different um, things. If you've got someone that is not happy, right, you're all going to want to spend more money on things to try to compensate for this. It's just a natural thing that happens, right? There's just, you you have this sort of, you know, I'm not going to worry about uh, tying those down. Um, you just have this kind of thing where you, you want to spend a bit more money to make up for the unhappiness. And that unhappiness isn't limited to just the one person that will spread through other people in the house i mean if you're on your own then you're unhappy and you're going to want to do things to compensate for that um if there's more than one person then you end up spending more money on all of you to compensate for this unhappiness and it's just a thing it's, it's just how we are as, as people as humans it's, that's just how it is and what i've noticed is that since I started doing this job. I'm a lot more content. I'm I'm really content with my life. I'm, and you know, I'm I'm sort of close to happiness. And yeah, of course, I get moment. You know, I get days, weeks, even where I'm really, really down. Um, I do live with depression after all. Um, but it doesn't mean that everything is over. And yes, you're still good. But the down points, whilst. You know, I, I do get them. I don't get them anywhere near as much as I used to. And in general, I would say I'm very content with my life. I am very, very content with my life. And it is quite an amazing thing. And the thing that goes alongside that is that we don't spend out... We don't want to spend out anywhere near as much as we used to. Because you you, you, you don't need to. You don't look at these things. Like, you look at... You used to look at... I used to look at advertisements of things and oh, I really want that. That would make me happy. I could get that, and it would make me happy. And, and it's it's just a thing. It's a, it's a human thing. Um, you do. You you look at things, and you think that if I had that, that would make me happy. And it's only it is only temporary. But the more miserable you are with your general lot in life, the more um, the the less content you are with your lot in life, the more likely you are to want these things. The more likely you are to want. Uh, the, the latest item, the, the, to see the latest film as soon as it comes out, to, to get these different things, to, to treat yourself. And this is one thing that I've noticed a lot, is that we used to treat ourselves a lot, right? And we, we did a lot. We would treat ourselves to an, a, an, a meal out, treat ourselves to a takeaway, treat ourselves to this, because we deserved it, because all of this hard work and these things that we were doing that was making us miserable, me in particular, but that filtered down into the rest of the family and now we're you know i'm so much more content with what i'm doing and with life in general and we don't so it, it filters down to it, it filters through to the rest of the family as well there isn't this constant need for treats you know you it's 
what we've got is already there. You know, we, we, we've got treats of just just what currently exists, and it's it's kind of a difficult difficult thing to describe sometimes because some people will listen to this spiel and say, "What on earth are you talking about, dudes? You, you you're just talking rubbish." Um, but it's it's actually a thing. So because this need for extra things, this this need for you know, just the odd treat here and there has kind of vanished. The outgoings that they they vanished as well. It's 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 made a huge difference. So yes, I'm getting paid less than I used to. I'm definitely um, on less than I used to be, but that's not a bad thing. I'm. You know, we're no worse off than we were before, right? We've got less than we had. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working on the lime. We're going to put lime on the field before we start the ploughing. Um, so we'll go and get that one hooked up, and then we need to get start filling it up with lime. We've got some bags of lime here. Hopefully that will be enough to do the fields. Uh, so, yeah, you, you've got this, this kind of thing where... Let me just back up to you. Grab that. I've got 20 litres of fertiliser in here at the moment. We'll put lime on first, so we want to empty out that bit of fertiliser. I'll bring that over here. Um, take a risk. If there's something that you really love to do, find a way to do it. Right? It's worth it. It's absolutely worth finding a way to make it work. And you'd be amazed when you're pushing towards that, how much little you can get by on compared to what you think you might need to get by on. And there is a, there's, there is a significant difference between the two. What you actually need and what you think you need, um, there is a difference. And But it's, you do actually need less when things, when things are changed and your outlook on life is sort of changed alongside it. You do, you, you actually physically need less than you did previously because you, you've already got that contentment. You, you've already achieved that. I mean, seriously think about it. How many of the things, how much of the stuff that you buy in a month is bought with the purpose of doing something to increase your happiness? How much of it is paying for standard bills and how much of it is paying for happiness which is kind of also needed, but at the same time, kind of not. It's, it's a little bit complicated, and yes, it's never nice to struggle for money. And I know exactly what it's like to really, really struggle for money. I've been there. I, I know where you're coming from. And for people who say, oh, yeah, but, you know, we, we really do struggle to pay the bills. I know exactly what it's like. Uh, trust me, I do know what it's like. And... It, it's, it's never easy. If, if you've got something that you really, really love doing and you want to try to turn that into a job, it's not going to be easy. It's absolutely not. But trust me, it is really worth it. And I would say the most important bit of it, though, is not sacrificing your own health, well-being and general happiness with life for a large company, and I would say large company, and maybe it's a small company, but generally, they're not so concerned about your health and well-being. They're more concerned about their bottom line, and they will do whatever it takes to get that bottom line to do what they want it to do, right? You are not a priority. They are. Um, so anyway, I've, I've, I've waffled on about this enough today. I've been thinking about this a lot today because of a few different things that have happened recently. Um... And also because I had a very weird nightmare last night um, where I dreamt that I was back doing the job that I hate. What, what, the, the, the job that I had that I really, really hated and it made me utterly, utterly miserable. And I, I actually had a nightmare about being back at work in that place. And it was horrible. It was really horrible. And I've never woken up and felt... Do you remember... When you were in school, right, everybody had this, everybody. When you were in school, you always had the dream at the beginning of the summer holidays where you woke up and thought, oh, I've got to go back to school. Or when you just finished school, when you're like 17, 18, you just finished school and you have the dream where you're still in school. And then you think, oh, thank goodness for that, I'm not. I mean, maybe that was, maybe it wasn't, maybe it's not everybody's had that dream. 
I hated school, so for me that that was definitely a thing. I I didn't like school at all. I know that some people really did love their years in school, but uh, um, me not not so much. But anyway, I have run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.